honored president, provost, dean, dear friends, colleagues, and family. Thank you for this opportunity to discuss about my research on reasoning and behavior in export marketing. Even though my research is about global firms, I would like to start by talking about football. In order to succeed in, in football, there are multiple factors that teams need to master. Of course, the better the players are, the be better are the chances of winning. But that's not enough. Playing at the top level requires that teams are also managed and trained extremely well. And in order to support this management, teams need to collect information about their customers, in other words, their fans, about their competitors and their tactics, as well as the game in one environment, like what kind of a turf or grass is used in the next away game. Well, simply collecting this information does not, per se, help much. But teams need to share the collected, the generated information across the relevant members within the team. So customer manager needs to receive relevant information about fans and their behavior. Uh, as well as the um, coaches, they need to receive all the relevant information about opponents' tactics. So that top coaches like Jose Mourinho, he can design the game tactics and train the team so that they know exactly how to play against the next opponent. Well, as, as we all know, goals are not made by simply collecting and sharing information. So teams need to also develop strategic responses. So they need to find ways how to utilize the information they have generated. Market orientation, the cornerstone in strategic marketing, comprises of these three focal sets of behaviors. The first set of behavior relates to organization-wide generation of market intelligence, consisting of, of information about customers, competitors, and operating environment. Second set of behaviors relates to disseminating this information across all the relevant parties within the firm or within the football team. And third set relates to organization-wide responsiveness to this knowledge. The majority of existing research has confirmed that possession of market orientation is often beneficial for firms' financial performance, proposing that managers aiming to improve their sales or profit figures should keep investing more and more resources in order to behave in more and more market-oriented manner. When we started our research journey, this, what I call the more the merrier approach, was the dominant one. And actually, the scholarly advice to managers was just to keep investing in behaviors that had worked well in the past, totally ignoring the well-known facts, for example, in economics, namely the law of diminishing returns, implying that every additional investment in the something will lead to smaller increase in the outcome. So in the world of football, this would mean that if we believe that knowing and studying uh, opponent tactics would help teams in their game performance, teams should spend more and more time in studying and rehearsing those tactics. Yet, given that players only have 24 hours a day, investing more and more in studying those tactics means that they would have less time in other important activities, like in their basic fitness or strength exercises, ball handling drills, or even rest and recovery. The seminal research on the impact of market orientation to firm performance has demonstrated that this effect is linear and positive, meaning that the more firms reported of behaving in market-oriented manner, the better their financial performance was. Later, 
it was actually found that this relationship is linear and positive, but moderated, meaning that there are certain like external factors like market dynamism that affects the strength of this relationship. Like in this example, here I have two lines, the black and red one. Black line represents environments which are rather stable, so customer needs are not changing, competitors are stable. In order to reach the performance level P1 here, firms needed to score in their market-oriented behaviors at level MO1. But if the operating environment becomes more dynamic, illustrated by un rapid uh, unseen changes, firms are not anymore operating on the black line, but on the red line, and now meaning that with same levels of investments in market-oriented behaviors, their performance level would be P2, which is significantly lower than P1. And in addition, if firms want to retain their same performance level in this new environment, they would need to increase their investments in market-oriented behaviors from level MO1 to level MO2. In other words, in dynamic environments where customer needs, competitor strategies and operating environment changes rapidly, investing in market orientation may not contribute to firm performance to the same degree. Closer examination of these results revealed that they were all based on insights from US firms operating in large domestic markets. Yet countries like Finland, with very small domestic markets, we are dependent on global business. For example, in 2017, the value of Finnish exports was 35% of our GDP, compared to 12% in the States. Thus, me and my team, we saw great potential in studying the mechanisms, how strategic behaviors like market orientation will drive profitable business performance among internationally active companies, as operating in multiple foreign markets differs in many aspects from running a domestic US firm. The reality, managers in firms like Kone, Nokia or UPM are facing is very different. For example, Nokia reports of having 138 office locations in 120 countries. So actually behaving in market-oriented manner would mean that Nokia would need to collect information about their customers, competitors and operating environments from those 120 countries and they would need to share the information to relevant parties across their 138 office locations, and they would need to develop strategic responses for each case. Considering all this complexity of operating globally, we could not be sure anymore, actually, that operating in a market-oriented manner was a good strategy also for global exporting firms, as being market-oriented requires heavy investments, and as those investments are multiplied by each novel target market. One of the most interesting issues requiring detailed and focused academic research attention was therefore the question of whether, relative to domestic market uh, environments, strategic orientations like market orientation have the same value in more complex environments firms often face when operating globally. In other words, what is the extent to which the linear, the more the merrier approach that dominated much of the literature base holds in international context? With our research, work is beginning to emerge that shows that the relationship between market orientation and firm international behavior performance may be nonlinear. Thus, contrary to earlier advice, encouraging managers to keep investing and development of stronger and stronger market orientation, we can now give them guidance on how to determine the optimum level of such investments and behavior. Our research confirms the results 
earlier results uh, implying that market orientation is beneficial for firm performance. But we found re uh, support for this result only at the lower levels of market-oriented behaviors. In contrast, operating in high levels of market-oriented behaviors, this relationship became negative. So, meaning, in, in, if, if we go back to our football example, this would mean that when Manchester United is playing uh, at the UK Premium League, and if it would put a lot of emphasis in studying its opponents and op operating in a market-oriented manner, eventually, in the start, it would do perfectly fine. But after reaching the optimum level, if it keeps investing in such a behavior, it start, it, it's starting to behave actually in a worse manner. So we were able to provide empirical support for the notion that firm performance needs more than just higher levels of market-oriented behavior. At some stage, investing in market-oriented behaviors becomes an opportunity cost because it is drawing on resources that would be better employed elsewhere. We have also demonstrated that increased market dynamism means that market-oriented behavior becomes even more critical for firm success. Let's compare these two curves. The upper curve represents stable market environments, whereas the lower, the steeper curve represents a more dynamic market. And if I go back to, to the football example, so the upper curve is, is, perfectly in, 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 is perfect in describing the situation when Manchester United is playing against other teams in the UK Premium League, because they are UK teams. UK teams share some similarities in tactics and strategies. It's relatively easy to study those teams. You talk same language and so forth. But when the uh, opponent environment becomes more versatile, like when Manchester United is playing in the UEFA Cup. Now it has teams to face that are coming from Germany or Portugal and Spain. So actually collecting the information becomes more difficult and, and trying to respond to the behaviors in the very same details than they were able to do in the UK Premium League becomes very, very challenging or even impossible in this new, more dynamic environment. Also, the optimum levels of market-oriented behaviors leading to maximum performance vary across these two situations. So in the demanding, dynamic environment, the maximum performance level drops from one, P1 to P3. And in football, this would mean that Manchester United would score fewer goals in the UEFA Cup than they are scoring in the Premium League, which I think is actually the case. So what can be learned from our research is that firms or football teams who don't adapt their strategic behaviors when their environment changes are actually suddenly in the situation that they find themselves not on the sweet spot on the optimal level up there on the curve, but on the downslope and actually doing worse off. I'd like to finish by encouraging more research into strategic orientation, as it has great capacity to identify these complex mechanisms by which global businesses can achieve their strategic objectives and enhance their performance. Thank you. <laughs>